Hi everybody, it's Heidi here again. Um, today we're going to be doing wired cutlery. Um, we did say just spoons, so these are my long handled spoons, so like ice cream spoons or we use them for like hot chocolate or if you're taking a travel mug, um, one of those really tall ones so you can stir your coffee etc. Um, so up close. Now these are quite old ones. Um, I used to sell them when I used to have a unit over at the antique centre across the road from us. Um, so these beads are not available now. Um, they're quite old ones that I had about, I don't know, four years, five years ago. Um, so those are the long handled spoons. And again, you can do it on teaspoons as well. So a bit of reflection on those, not so good. Okay, so I've done some cutlery as well. Um, I used to have, um, I had one customer that uh, was giving um, cake forks and hi Dawn, um, cake forks and a cake uh, slice as a wedding gift and she wanted hers beading up um, for the for the bride and groom so that's really nice to do and it's also nice to do a set of cutlery um, so that's what we're going to look at today so I'm going to turn you down so you can see what's on my mat okay so you can see I have got some cutlery okay so they don't have to be all matching, but it's nice if you're doing a set for somebody, you can do them roughly, obviously as the size goes down to teaspoons, sometimes you can't fit as many of the beads on the width wise, but um, these are all kind of matching because they've got the same beads on them. Okay, so I have got one of the long handled spoons and I've got the beads the same as these lovely purple ones to show you how I did it. Okay, so I grabbed some beads and as I say, you, you don't have to make them all matching. Um, you can make them all different, um, but it's nice if you're giving a set of cutlery to somebody um, to do them all kind of matching in a color that they like. Um, so basically what we've got is, this wire is a 0.0 I think it's 0.9 this one yeah 0.9 millimeter this lovely purple um, and the color is dark purple um, now it doesn't have to be 0.9 it can be oh actually it's not that one it's this one it's this bright purple which is a 0.7 so anything from a 0.7 up to a 1 mil wire will be fine. I prefer 0.7 or 0.9 purely because it's it you can get more beads on it because it's thinner um, and I take for all of my cutlery I do about the width of my mat which is I think 12 by 12 plus about a half again so I take a length of wire and very good if you have your nylon jaw pliers so that if you've got any kinks in your wire you can just run your wire through your pliers to straighten it back out again okay so the first thing i'm going to do is with my round nose pliers now if you've been on one of our wire classes you probably will have learned how to do this but to make a spiral so you can see on the top of this one that's how it starts with a spiral okay so I take my round nose pliers and all I do is with the tip of them just make a little loop just so it touches I don't know if you can see that so you can just see there tiny weeny little loop and then use your nylon jaw or if you haven't got nylon jaw you can use your flat flat pliers um, and just hold it so you can just see, I don't know if you 
can see that close enough. Let's see what we can do. You can just see the edge of it. So what you're doing is pushing the wire against the edge of itself to wrap it around to make that spiral. And each time you move it further round, keep it flat with your pliers and just keep passing it round so it wraps upon itself and you only need to see the edge of it so that you're, it's the edge that you're pushing the wire up against to make your spiral and when you get more proficient with this you can obviously do it a bit quicker but I suggest if you've not done it before do it really slowly so that you you don't rush it and end up with the wire going on top of itself which can happen if you're not concentrating so you only need a tiny bit at the side exposed so that you can see where you're wrapping that wire to okay and when I'm doing a set like this I tend to just take it to the one of the ones that I've already done oops and just see if the size is the same so I just want to do a little bit more on it okay and then I'm going to use my round nose pliers to just kink the wire oops, back over to the other side and this is when we take it to the spoon so I'm going to sit that let's do it this way so you can see sit that spiral on the top I'm just going to put my fingers over it a second so that I can hold it still and I'm just going to wrap it around underneath itself so like it. don't worry if it starts moving around because at the very end we will do something to secure it okay so I've got enough wraps around it I'm just going to add two of my beads to the wire okay and you can see just added those two beads and then I generally when I wrap I wrap two times in between oops let's move that down a bit two times before I add oops the next set of beads or whatever I've got to put on the oops so the next thing I've got is a little acrylic metallized disc and I tend to sort of push it backwards slightly on the wire so that it gives it enough space to to wrap around oops daisy and get it in position so there we go and then wrap around again twice and it this wire will go underneath this little disc thing Okay, and then we add three, and these are the little lava rocks beads. Oops, Daisy. So just hold it nice and firmly and wrap around, and then another two of these beautiful. I want to call them like cat's eye beads because they are similar to cat's eye beads and then probably could have done with a bit more wire on this one but never mind okay so the very bottom I've got this wire sticking out and again I'm just gonna turn it round so that it's creating just a little tiny see that actually 
out and loop and do the same thing again. You might not get if your wire's a bit short. I mean, the best thing to do, ideally, is if you find that you've cut too short a piece of wire is to just cut it off and start again if you want it to be perfect. I'm not too worried. So we've got a small, we've got a small little spiral here and a bigger one at the top. Now, the way to secure this so that it doesn't move up and down is go to the back and use your pliers to press press on the back of it and this will secure your wires so and all cutlery is different so some so for instance this spoon has got a a, a curved back so quite nice because the wire presses down into it and holds it nice and secure so now we've got let's just do another little twist on that we've got the long spoon to match it okay so now I've got some other colours here so I've got this gorgeous blue and you don't have to start with a spiral you can start with any shape that you want um, you can make a little love heart shape or you can do um, a triangle so let's do so I'm using my flat pliers here Do a little sort of triangle shape. Oops, I don't see. Okay, once you've got that shape there, you can you can then play around. square but it's it's a shape so this one's more of a a rounded triangle I should say okay let's grab a knife and let's anchor it Royal blue beads oh, and some little tiny ones. These are nice. These are all the glass beads from the shop. Oops, the daisy. And I've got ooh, some of these, those cat's eye type ones. And I've got some silver some silver beads so let's start with these beautiful cat's eye and I've got some spacers that can go in between so if I use two of those one of these and let's use another one of those spaces oh, let's, let's use a silver bead and then we've got these little tiny ones which are gorgeous and then what have I got I can put in between those? Oh, got some little tiny spaces. 
we've got a whole wall full of um whoops did I say we've got a whole wall full of spacers silver gold copper hundreds of different sorts and I'm positive that not all of them are on are on the uh, website but if you come into the shop my goodness you will be sport for choice okay so we've got a nice selection there so you don't have to finish with a spiral you can finish with some sort of a swirl so I'm gonna do a kind of a loop if you do this and then you're not happy with it just use your your nylon jaw pliers and you can redo it so just some random shapes and it makes the world of difference so now quickly whilst I'm here I just want to show you something so I've been looking on Amazon and, and various other places and I get adverts come up on my Facebook and there seems to be a massive popularity for these things called ear crawlers. Now they have a hook which goes over the top of your ear and then this pointed part here goes through your normal piercings at the bottom of your earlobe. So whether you have one or two this bit goes through the bottom and this bit hooks on to your ear okay and they're about 20 pounds each they're so expensive so I thought I'm sure I can make some of these so I did so here was my first one I wanted something a bit different than what what they've got online so I used my hope beads and this is uh, some of the coiling gizmo uh, wire that I wrapped and I turned a little hook hook at the back with a little loop and I cut it at the bottom and then I have this tool that I have from the shop and it's a little it's just a little tiny dimple there with um, a bit like a nail file or a ch uh, not a chisel like sandpaper and if you pop the end of your wire into it and just keep turning it backwards and forwards it smooths off and rounds the end of your wire so that it's not sharp and catching so there's one but then I thought right okay we can do, do a bit better than that it's not very um, sparkly so I did another one, this one I really like, and I tried this one on it, it looks fabulous. So you do your little hook, and then I had a straight piece of wire, and all I did was I used my GS Hypo cement, and I put some glue at the top, popped all my little beads on, and as I went down I added more glue halfway down, and then more glue at the bottom, here, pushed all my beads up to where I wanted them to be and then once I'd glued them all I used my paintbrush to spiral it and then again on the end of my wire I'm just using my little my little rounder to round that wire up at the bottom so I just thought because this is so fashionable at the moment you can really do whatever you want um, and any of the beads you can use your GS Hypo cement so my go-to glue for all my jewellery bits um, and just glue your first bead on 
and then glue your last bead on and maybe a couple in the middle just to secure them so they don't drop and this looks absolutely stunning on in fact let me turn the camera up and i will show you oops a daisy so Get my hair out the way. So I'm just going to poke it through first. And I have got my other earrings in as well. So, the good thing with this is that you can squeeze that top bit. my ear crawler and let's try the other one as well I actually found the one that I'd ordered offline I found I mean I don't know whether I've got particularly large ears so there's the other one not so good on this ear because I've got a piercing on the inside here so it kind of gets confusing but um, there you go um, I actually found that the one that I bought which was this one was a bit short and it kept falling out of my ear so it wasn't it wasn't particularly great because it's supposed to hook over the top bit there but it's not so I'm glad that I was able to um, whoops a daisy there we go and obviously I wouldn't have that one there so yeah I just thought that might be a little trick that you might want to try So, root out any spare cutlery. Obviously, you can get it quite cheap in, in certain shops. You know, you can buy cheap cutlery. And obviously, you know, you can really jazz it up. Or you could buy, um, like, antique cutlery. Um, some of the antique cutlery is really nice, and it has nice shaped, um, nice shaped handles and things like that so it gives you a wider base to use more beads on it um, so you can play around with it um, you can't put them in the dishwasher although it has been done but it tends to make your beads fade and obviously if you have got silver on it, it's going to tarnish um, so hand wash only and to be honest with you they stay on there for yonks you know they don't sort of fall off very easily and then um, they they do stay on um i mean these ones that i that i did years ago you know they're still in really good nick so yeah so it's really nice to use for a gift for somebody and i think i did one year i i actually did a, a it was called a heidi's hug um it was a hot chocolate kit and we did the spoons with chocolate on them so that you could dip that into your hot chocolate and melt chocolate um, into your hot chocolate. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Donna's up next on Wednesday. Um, she's going to be on Create and Craft, I believe, doing jewellery making. And then at 3.30 on Wednesday, she's going to be doing her Kumihino endings. So those of you that have got loads of Kumihino pieces that need finishing off and having the ends put on, catch up with Donna on Wednesday at 3.30. Okay, so I shall say goodbye now. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. And any questions, just shoot us, shoot us your questions. Yes, the hot chocolate spoon idea is lovely. And I did um, those bags that look like a piping bag, you know, a triangular one. I did one of those with drinking chocolate in it um, and then a layer of marshmallows and then the spoon came with it with um, melted chocolate on it so it's, it's solidified and then you could stir that in once everything was 
nice and hot and frothy. <laughs> so yeah, really lovely. Um, nice gift for someone. You could actually give it to them with a mug as well. So really nice gift. Okay, guys. So Donna will see you on Wednesday at 3.30. Thanks for tuning in to us. Take care. Bye.